We've done this rectangle and now what we need to do is to work on this travel main text animation. Let's go back to zero second. I want this animation to be more like a stop motion. So it's very simple to do. First of all, what we need to do is we need to separate each letter. To make it easier, I can just solo this text on the frame. Let's hit on this uh, solo icon here, this little dot in front of the layer. If I click on this one, it's going to solo my text and then hide everything else. And since we have a black background, it's going to show a black background over this black text, which is very hard to see. So what we need to do is we can just toggle this transparency grid. Hit on this, it's going to show you a transparent background. I need to duplicate this travel layer one, two, three, four, five, five times to have each letter on its own layer. Let's duplicate one, two, three, four, five. Now I have five layers of travel. And then let's go to this rectangle tool. Make sure we have this first travel layer selected. Go to the rectangle tool, draw a box outside of the letter T. It's going to isolate the letter T. And then go to the second travel, draw a box outside of letter R. And go to the A, the third travel, draw a box. However, you can see the letter A is when I draw the box, it's covering the V2. So I need to hit on the layer again and then go to the selection tool and then make sure I drag this mask to the left so that it's not covering the V. Go down the list. This is another layer. I need to draw a mask around the V. Select this anchor point, make sure it's not covering the A. And then go to the rectangle tool again, draw a mask around the E. And then the last one, let's see what we have. If I only solo one layer, you can see I have only have a T. And then this layer, I only have an R. And then this layer, I only have an A. Each layer only have one letter. Now what we need to do is go to position property, hit P on the keyboard. Let me drag this workspace a bit, make it bigger. Before we start to animate these letters, we need to make sure the anchor point of each letter is at the center of the letter. So I need to change these anchor points, drag them to the center of the letter. Let's go to the first layer and then go to this top menu, pen behind tool. Make sure I click on that and then I can drag the anchor point to the center of the letter. This way, later on, if I want to rotate the letter, it's going to rotate from the center of the letter. If I don't do this, it's going to rotate from the center of the frame, which is not what we want. Let's go to the second layer and then drag the anchor point to the center of the R. Go to the third layer, drag the anchor point here and then go to the next layer, drag the anchor point here, go to the next layer, drag the anchor point to the center of the E, and then go to the next layer, go, drag the anchor point to the center of the L. Now, I need to think about the animation. I want the animation to kind of settle in place around two seconds. So let's go to the two second on the timeline, and then I can select all of the travel layer, hit P on the keyboard, pull up position property, hit a stopwatch to add a keyframe. And then let's go back to frame zero. I need to, for the letter T, and I want the T to come in from the left corner here. And then I want the R to come in from here as well. I want the A to come in maybe from down here. I want the V, to come in, you see, my V has an anchor point all the way over here with it wrong. So I need to use this pen behind tool, but like since I already have the keyframes now, I wouldn't be able to change it like how we did it before. So I need to delete the keyframes for the V because it's all messed up. I need to delete the keyframe and then 
Now I can drag the anchor point all the way to the center of the V, and then we can go to two seconds, add the anchor point. This is where I want this letter to settle, right? So this is the end point of the animation. And the start point, I want the V to come in from the top. Let's pull it all the way to the top. And then I want the E to come in from the top as well. And then I want the L to come in from the right corner. So at zero second, there's nothing in the frame. And they just come in like this. However, if they just come in like this, it's too boring. It doesn't look like stop animation. So what I need to do is I need to also pull up the rotation property, select all of these six layers, and then hit Shift R to pull up the rotation property. And make sure the final rotation is like this. So just set a rotation property at the end and this is the final state of the letters. But in the front, we can change it freely, randomly also. So I can just drag them like randomly. Maybe something like this, go like this, go like this, and then drag like this. And then drag like this. When they first come in, I would have to manually adjust the rotation to make it more interesting. So for the T to come in, I kind of want it to have like something like this. And then maybe the R like this. something like this for now. And then not only the rotation, I also want to set a position property for all of them. Let's set the position property. Like you see right now, I only have one rotation keyframe, but if I click on the stopwatch, it's gonna cancel all the keyframe that I set before. So I need to click on this little empty dot here. That's all the way in the front. Once I click on this dot, it's gonna add a keyframe on the position property. So now I not only have position property, but also rotation property on the letters. And then when they kind of move in, I also want them to move in in a random fashion. So maybe like here, and then they can change the value of rotation. And then for the R, I want it to come here, rotate in the opposite direction for the A, move it closer to the R, and then rotate this way. And the V can come here, rotate this way, and the E can go here and rotate in opposite way. So every time I want to change the value of rotation, I want the new value to be the opposite side of the old value. If it's negative something from the start at this point before, the next time when I rotate, I want a positive value just to make it more dramatic. I don't want like two positive value together. It's gonna be kind of boring. I just wanna, you know, make it more fun. So at this point, we can change the letter to here and then change it maybe to 20. And this one, you can even see the path of the animation, right? 20. And then the V can go here. It's plus nine just now. I can make it minus 20. And then this one, go this side, 25. The R can go here, 
minus 25. And the T can go here. I can do like 10 maybe. And before they settle in place, I also want the letter to go over like an overshoot before they settle in their final state. I want the letter to kind of go over to the top, like to say this T, I want it to go over and then maybe rotate a little bit and then come down. This is called a overshoot in animation. Whenever something animates, when it reaches the final state, it doesn't just rest right away. It, sometimes it goes over and then reconcile, recoil back to its final position. So I want to have this R to go up and then rotate like this. And then the A to go up. change the rotation, the V, the V should go down. And then put a little rotation over there, the E can go down. Let's put like a negative nine. And then the last one, this can go down, this can go down like this. All right. So let's hit R here. And then we can see, let's see the animation first. It's too slow and it's got all the in-between frames, which what we don't want. So what we need to do is select all the keyframe here and then right click, toggle hold keyframes. Let's preview it again. Now it looks much better. It goes like this, like this, like this. I feel like we're missing one in between animation from this state to this state. It's kind of like the movement is too much. So I think we need to add something in between over here. Let's try to add something over here. Maybe just move it up a little and then change it to negative five, something like that. And then over here, let's move it up, move it to the right, change it to positive 10. This one, go up to the left. I think the R is kind of touching the A, which is a bit messy. I need to make this R closer to the T now, and then put the A over here. Something like that, and then try to drag down the V as well. Put it positive 10, and then the E can be something like this, negative 10, and the L can be way over here. And then let's do negative 10. As we have this and then go down. However, after I added this one rotation keyframe, you can see the this keyframe and these two keyframes are both negative keyframe now because they're not in the opposite spectrum anymore. So I need to kind of change this keyframe here for all the layers to be a positive keyframe so that there's more of a contrast in rotation value. Otherwise, it's just going to look a bit awkward. It's going to look a bit um, not that fun. Let's change it to a opposite value, maybe negative five. And then if it's negative nine, let's change it to nine. And then if it's negative three, let's change it to positive three. Something like this, but then the R is too close. Where's the R? The R is too close. I need to modify the R a little bit so that it's not touching as much. Okay, that's good. Let's see the animation here. That looks pretty good. I like it. 
Let's turn off the solo button here. Click on this little dot. Now we have the whole scene here. Let's go back to zero second and start previewing it. I think this frame is a little bit awkward. It looks a little weird because the V is kind of touching the A. So what I want to do is I want to modify this A here. Maybe change the rotation a little bit so that it's not connecting to the V as much. Yeah, that looks much better. That's good. All right, that's it with our travel layer animation. There's a couple more elements that we need to animate in the first scene, but I'll show you the rest in the next video.